A cool thing that Reverb does is they partner with bands to sell some of their gear occasionally. This time, Russian Circles. Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. If you're not familiar with these guys, they are an American instrumental band based out of Chicago, Illinois, which works really well since that's where Reverb's headquartered. But they have a very active touring schedule all over the world and many different songs to check out. But regardless if you know of these guys or not, they had some really cool gear in their shop. So let's highlight the guitars. So starting things off here, they had a 1987 Gibson Les Paul Custom in gunmetal gray. That's a pretty rare color. It's out there if you want to find it. I know Bill Kelleher of Mastodon is well known for using one of these, and I've documented a couple on my show if you want to check them out a little bit more in depth. But what made me really interested in this one is this is not a regular Les Paul Custom. Do you see this right here? That's not a missing knob that you just need to replace, that's a mini toggle switch. And then when you flip it over to the back, you're going to notice, huh. A comfort carve on a Les Paul? Has this thing been refinished and modified? No, this is the original Les Paul Custom Light. So if you're not familiar, a little after the mid-80s, Gibson came out with this Custom Light. It's basically the thickness of an SG, but it looks like a Les Paul Custom. So generally you'll find these in the ebony finish, a cherry sunburst, as well as a few other common colors, but the flagship super 80s color has to be Sunset Metallic. We've also seen at least one silver burst one made, but this mini toggle made it so you could split your pickups into single coil tones. Mix that with the fact that these things were lighter, it made them interesting novelties that Gibson reissued later on in 2014 and had a few runs up until 2016. Now you're gonna notice, I never said charcoal metallic, which is the official color of this one. Now I'm not gonna call this a custom color, I'm just gonna call it a pretty uncommon common color to find. So that got my collector senses tingling because this actually looked pretty clean. Yeah, we got a little bit of neck wear. You can actually see the original finish right here. These age into a nice olive green color. A lot of guys don't really care for the mini toggle switch, so they'll end up routing them out for traditional controls. So it's nice that that one was left alone. But then it went down here and it said, well, this was played all over their European tour. And they told us more about the cosmetic condition here. So I thought, eh, probably not the one for me. But it was listed at $5,750. Was that a good price or not? Well, what's currently on the market, everything sits around $5,000. All things considered, I mean, it wasn't that crazy of a price if it was sold to a fan. So here's what they advertise as an SG Custom Silver Burst. Isn't quite what this is, this is an SG Standard. That's one of the really nice ones that has the Silver Burst finish. An ebony fretboard, with not that you can really see it in these photos, they're so bleached out. There is binding on the headstock. But take a close look at this pickguard. Something's a little bit off with our screws right here. So if we continue to scroll through these photos, you can actually see this has an additional route right here and a see-through backplate. This actually started life as one of the SG Robot guitars. So the pick guard had to be modified. The whole tune the guitar for you system has been ripped out and regular tuners installed. But interestingly enough, they left the Neutrik jack, which is a locking jack, which I could see that being a very great feature if you're an onstage artist. But if you're just playing at home, it's kind of annoying to have to press in this red tab to get your lead to come out. Usually you can get a pretty good deal on these old robots, so it's worth it to convert them. There was definitely a small premium put onto that one but it sold very quickly. Whoa, I must have missed this one. That was a screaming deal. BB King Lucille Custom. I probably looked at this and was like, ah, yeah, just regular Lucille, but no, this is one of the limited edition models. Looks like somebody swapped out our knobs. It definitely has some play wear, but I've been wanting to document one of these. It's a Gibson that doesn't have Gibson on the headstock. It just says BB King. <laughs> I always thought that was an interesting one. That's part of Gibson history. It has to have a headstock repair or something. I'm not sure what's going on here, if it needs cleaned or if that's residue of a repair. I guess he liked this because of the lack of F holes so he could play high distorted tones without the squealing feedback. I don't see a mention of a repair, but definitely heavily played. For example, here's one in really clean shape listed at about 5,000. So that's not the worst price we've ever seen, especially for an artist guitar. Now, at the time of recording, this one is still available. It's an SG Custom, an actual custom this time, in Verdordo Green. 
SG Customs typically have three pickups, but you can also custom order two pickup ones. But then it's just like a SG Standard with a cool fretboard on it and a fancier headstock. But this lime green finish is awesome. I love it. I'm surprised it's lasted in their shop. Out of everything we've seen, this one looks like it was played the least, and maybe that's why it hasn't necessarily sold too quickly. People want the beat up stuff that's been road worn. But that is a pretty cool color that has heavily yellowed. I doubt it left the factory yellowed like that but it's kind of turned into a cool gecko green iguana burst type thing going on. But it started at 5,200 and now they've slashed it all the way down to 4,000. Apparently they just used it for studio time and a few shows here and there. It's actually quite tempting. Next up, another SG Custom, this time 67 style, and we've got the triple buckers. So this one, they said it's from 1992, which is kind of fascinating because that technically puts it within the prehistoric era. However, prehistoric SGs don't formally exist depending on how you define a prehistoric. For me, it has to have an ink stamp serial number, and that doesn't exist within the SG range. The 62 reissues is usually as close as you'll ever get. So this is a pre-custom shop SG Custom, essentially, which you don't see for sale every day. This one must have been another studio guitar because it actually looks pretty clean for its age, but it definitely has a Big chunky case. Look at that compartment. You could fit a whole pedal board in there. That one sold for somewhere around 3400 And there were a few cheaper options, like a couple of Boss pedals, Bogners, Akai. We had a couple of amplifiers if you're interested in that kind of stuff. And other than that, they also had a couple of cases. Gibson Chainsaw Case, Gen 3. Okay, now this is technically Gen 4. It's when they ripped out all the padding and they made them terrible cases. So yeah, that, that was a little bit much to pay for that, but not too crazy if you're a fan of the band. Well, this one's kind of cool. A road case. Road cases are pretty expensive. That one looks a little bit more on the homemade side, as far as the interior padding goes anyway. But this does seem more like a, we want to sell these things very fast because only after a couple of days they're slashing these prices. Except for this. I don't know anything about drums, but six and a half thousand for a single one? Must have some sort of a collector value to it. It's the only thing they haven't slashed the price on. But since we've got a little bit of additional time left tonight, a couple of other cool guitars showed up. Another Aldo Nova signature model. It's been a couple of years since I made the video on mine. I thought for sure that video was going to get like one or two more to pop up on Reverb, like it did on the White Studio Custom XPLs. But no, it's been a while. So basically, if you don't know the story behind these, is Aldo Nova, he ordered two of them. He was supposed to get them, but unfortunately something happened to his other one, and then Rick Nielsen ended up getting it from Grun's Guitars. And then, without him knowing, the Gibson Custom Shop just decided to make a couple of these in special batch order runs. Like, there's really just a handful. But you can get all the nitty-gritty detailed information from Aldo himself and review the research that I've done on this model in that video. So, it was very interesting to see this one show up. Unfortunately, it's not in very good condition. Somebody put one of those MIDI pickups on it, so you got two additional holes in the top. It does have a cool streaked rosewood fretboard, just like mine has. But the biggest oof on this one is it, it's got the headstock crack, and that's a pretty ugly one. According to the guy that this dealer got it from, is that happened very early on in the guitar's life, like right after he bought it and he sent it back to Gibson for repair. I mean, that's a good story, but I don't know if that adds up. That doesn't look like a Gibson quality repair. Gibson would probably just replace the neck back then. But a repair is a repair at the end of the day, as long as it holds up. But the asking price on that one is $40,000. I mean, I have mine on my website. I mean, if somebody wants to give me a hundred grand for it, I'd probably let it go. But I would be very sad about it. <laughs> and I might tell you I've changed my mind. Where does the true market exist? I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell because most people that own these, they don't want to sell them. And another one from the same seller, this. I'm upset about this. <laughs> I was buying this guitar. A viewer of the show sent me the Facebook Marketplace ad because this one was on Reverb too. And I had worked out a deal with the seller because I was going to buy this and keep it because I did an old wiring episode on it. Because I've always loved the blue kimono vibes this one had going on for it. And I'd linked up with the seller. I made him an offer. And then we eventually made an agreement. So I asked him to send me a PayPal invoice so I could pay. But unfortunately, he sent me a PayPal payment request instead of an invoice. 
And for whatever reason, PayPal does not email me when somebody sends me a payment request. Because a lot of times those are just fraudulent. So he had sent it. A couple of hours went by. I, I was just waiting for him to send it because I never got the email. And then I get another message saying, oh, somebody just bought it on Reverb. It's like, ah, this guitar evades me again. Because I was going to end up keeping this thing because it's just beautiful. It's got the stinger on the back too, which just makes it a little bit cooler. I'm impressed it still has the COA. But that's all right. I guess I didn't really need this guitar in my collection. I just thought it would have been fun to finally have documented it. But at the end of the day, the pickups have been replaced. Somebody installed a pick guard on it. Because you can see in the original Musician's Friend ad for this one, it didn't have the pick guard. But thankfully, you really can't see the holes on it, so I guess it wasn't that bad. But it's an absolutely gorgeous example. A little bit abstract. Alright, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.